Here we go. When I think of people who have written symphonies, I think of Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, or Mozart. People who, people who died long ago. Well, Dan Welcher. died long ago? Yes. <laughs> By the way, what happened, what happened after Beethoven died? He decomposed. <laughs> he, he's rolling over in his grave. Roll over, Beethoven. Okay. Well, anyways, 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 Frank. <laughs> Dan Welcher writes symphony, and he is very much alive, and he's here right now to join us. Dan. <laughs> to know how you got to St. Mary's from Texas. Well, before I tell you that, I have to thank Frank for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Oldest joke in the world, <laughs> except to some of the people here tonight. <laughs> Between my pickleball song and my ding-a-ling, this is a, a, a super night for music, Frank. <laughs> All thanks to you. Amazing, you know, from Texas, you came up to here. There's a lot of us come from a ways out here, and uh, you've come from far away. Yes, I've come from away, but I, I live here in the summer now. I, I bought know. a house here three years ago. I, know. I began going to the Stratford Festival, not in time to see you in it, although I did see you act in Louisville when I used to play in Probably, the orchestra yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And I saw you, I recognized when he came in, I used to go to the symphony orchestra when I was at Actors Theatre of Louisville. And I particularly like the bassoon. It's an instrument I like. And there was this young kid there. You were pretty young, I was younger in my than 20s, me. Yeah. And with the beard, playing the bassoon. And when he walked in, I went, "Oh my gosh, I know who he is." Oh my gosh, where's the amazing? bassoon? Louisville, to <laughs> years later. Okay. Yeah. So how'd you get to St. Mary's? Like what? You came here, but what made you come here every year? Well, my my girlfriend, my partner, and I have been coming here for the Stratford Festival and also to visit her relative. She's a Canadian citizen. Uh -huh. And Aren't you wise? who wants to be in Central Texas in, in July and August <laughs> when they can be here? At home it was, well, the equivalent in centigrade. I'm not really sure. 105 Fahrenheit today where I live during You're the You're looking year. at about 41, 42 yeah. centigrade. Yes, and it's that way all summer. So that's why I'm here. I also do my composing up here. I have a nice little studio in my house and do my work. Okay. You know, most kids grow up wanting to play a sport or, or be in a rock band or something, and you wrote symphonies. Uh, well, not when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> but how did that come about? Actually, I, I started writing right after I started taking piano lessons. I was seven when I wrote my first piece. Yeah, not 10, but seven. Okay. That's not unusual, though, and it wasn't a symphony. Very delayed. Very yeah, delayed. definitely. A slow, slow late bloomer. Right. So what, what, how would you describe your music? My music is classical, but it's approachable. There's, an, there's such a huge, wide variety within serious music right now between utterly unfathomable, in, only to other composers and the elite, to really, really pandering, and I'm somewhere in the middle of all that. If you like Aaron Copeland, you might like me. Thank you. You don't know me at all, but you like me already. You really, really like me. Well, I, I saw Yellow Wallpaper this afternoon, his opera, and it's basically a one-woman opera, though there's another voice that comes in. And it is, it is accessible to us. It's in English, it's accessible, and very exciting. I could hardly breathe by the ending. It Thank like, you. It's on oh. YouTube if anybody wants to it's see on it. Yes. Yeah. So you, uh, where does the music come from? Uh, should I quote Mozart from my noodle? <laughs> okay. Well, what are some of the things that inspired you? Well, because I usually write to order, people pay me to write a piece, and it can be an occasion, it can be somebody's wedding anniversary, it can be, uh, as it was once, the 40th anniversary of the Aspen Music Festival, they asked me to write an overture, or the 140th anniversary of the founding of the Boston Pops, they asked me to write an overture. So people have a reason, and I use the reason as the impetus to write the piece, and I find something within that. For instance, the Boston Pops, he told me, Keith Lockhart, he said, write something that starts loud because no one is listening for the first minute of yeah, these yeah. concerts. Like there will be no introduction, we're just gonna start. So I thought, why not pop a champagne cork, musically, and make the first minute of the piece all about the bubbles and the fizz. And so the piece was called Spumante, and that's how it worked. Okay, great. 
Now, you, what are you working on right now? I'm, this summer, I'm writing a piano concerto, which will be premiered next April. And I'm also writing, <laughs> Frank's going to love this, a duet for bassoon and marimba. Yeah, don't think Jimmy Buffett, though. It's not going there. <laughs> <laughs> so now, we want to get you playing something. Uh, you're some, you can't play a symphony. They're rather long. So we really don't have time to listen to one of them, but can you give us a sample of something that you've written? I'll do a little, a little short piano piece, because I know this is a very long show today, but if, if you do want to hear my music, it's uh, danwelcher.com. Just go to my website, you can find it. But I'll, I'll, should I carry this with me and walk over there? Why not? All right. So the little tiny piece, and I have to thank Frank for allowing me to sit, because... Are you kidding? Maestro! As you know, he never sits. This is a little piece I wrote again to order, and it was when Linda, my partner, began taking adult piano lessons after 30 years of not playing anything, maybe longer than that. And my, my challenge to myself was to write one piece a day for one week, and I called the piece A Little Domestic Diary, and I made my inspiration, because you asked about that, something that was in the house, no, no, no. <laughs> You wouldn't know the difference, but I will. So the inspiration of this little piece is called Zoe's Tail, and that's a pun because Zoe was her dog, and the dog had a tail that would not quit. So I thought this is my inspiration for a piece that lasts less than one minute. It's called Zoe's Tail because it never stops. This little eighth note, think of the tail wagging as this goes on. In fact, the, the uh, performance indication says, happily wagging, quarter note equals 116. So this is Zoe's Tail. Frank, you and uh, Dan are gonna do something together. Just a minute. Just a minute to not be outdone. You think you can keep up with me? I was gonna ask you the same question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Danny, let's do something simple for you. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good for the music. It's on! <laughs> Let me see now. Let's make it simple for this maestro from Texas. <laughs> Do you know, like, uh, Chopsticks? I've heard of it. You heard of it? Yeah. I'm going to play... Microphone. I'm going to play the left hand. You're going to play... Right. It doesn't work anyway. Don't worry about it. Get rid of it. Okay. Hold it over here. He's going to play the left hand. I'm going to play the right hand. And we just pop the battery. That's how hot this show is. <laughs> Okay, let's try it together. You ready, Maestro? <laughs>
amazed at the people we have right here in our midst. And Dan, you're one of the gems. Thanks for coming in today, Dan.